Well, well, well. <laughs> Look at what we have here. I got a suspicious package from YouTube. So let's open it up and, and see what's inside. I think I, I might have an idea on what it is, but uh, let's see here. We got a, a letter here, a congratulatory letter from the CEO of YouTube. Okay. And uh, yep, that's what I thought. We got the silver play button here. Let me take it out. And uh, let me take it out of the plastic here. So presented to keep on coding for surpassing 100,000 subscribers. And wow, that's, that's crazy. I've seen other people like have their play buttons, but just something about seeing your channel's name on it is it's just something that's pretty special. So thank you guys. I know how hard it is to get subscribers. Like for me personally, when I watch a channel, like I would have to watch several of their videos and I would have to like really like it and maybe I'll subscribe to the channel. So to get 100,000 people is uh, pretty mind bottling. Did you just say mind bottling? Yeah, mind bottling. So for celebrating hitting the milestone, I asked a bunch of you guys to ask me questions that you wanted me to answer. And I thought I would get like a dozen questions or something and you guys, gave me like hundreds of questions. So thank you guys. I'll try to get to as many as possible. Um, but obviously I can't read them all. Otherwise the video is gonna be like three hours long. So I'm just gonna go through, uh, pick my favorite ones and uh, yeah, should be a fun video. All right, the first question is from MBSK21. After taking on your first job in your main career, how do you keep motivated? I believe I've talked about this in a video about how motivation kind of comes and goes. It's, it's more of like a roller coaster. We, as humans, it's, it's like impossible to stay motivated 100% of the time. So what you should be focusing on is building good habits because we're habitual creatures. We like getting in a routine. So that's what you can rely on when your motivation dips sometimes. So I think it's more about building good habits and also not getting fired from your job is, is usually pretty good motivation. Imad asks, I know you have a master's in computer science. Do you recommend getting a master's if you, if say your undergrad is not in CS or getting a master's in CS is necessary, whether, uh, whether you have a CS bachelor's or not? I would say if you already have a bachelor's in computer science, there are very few reasons why you should go for a master's. Maybe if your like, company is paying for it and they'll give you a pay bump if you do it, maybe or maybe you just really like doing research and there's a specific topic you wanna to go into. But other than that, uh, if you're just trying to get a job, a bachelor's is more than enough. Because a master's degree in computer science is not easy. For me, not having a, that CS degree, it took me four years to get into the program and finish it. And in that time, I saw people doing like three month boot camps and getting jobs for 150,000. However, I, I wouldn't go back and change anything. For me, it was more about setting a very challenging goal for myself and achieving it. And, and really like after getting that degree, like the, the like mountain I had to climb over that, I really felt like I could accomplish anything. And uh, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't change anything. Sam Bro Gaming, what's a good project to learn core concepts? The last video I made was literally covering project ideas. So go check out that video. You'll probably get some good ideas. Moist Burrito, what a name. Will you ever do YouTube full time? Uh, that would be really cool. Uh, but contrary to what a lot of people believe, YouTube doesn't pay that well. Uh, they pay probably the best out of any platform, but it's definitely not enough to like go full time on. So if I did that, it would probably have to be in tandem with like something else, like maybe like tutoring or making some kind of service. Uh, but for now, I don't, I don't really have any plans with that. I'm content with just doing YouTube and just having a regular job for now. All right, let's see here. Uh, Lucille asked, why are you so handsome? Oh, thank you. Um, I'm flattered. Um, I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, maybe ask my parents. Nullbyte asked, is remote work going to continue after the pandemic? Do you think companies will give us less compensation? Why or why not? I do feel like remote work will continue uh, for a lot of places after the pandemic, but I also feel like companies are also trying to get their employees back. I think it's gonna be more like half and half where you go into work like two or three times and then you're remote the rest of the week. I don't think we're gonna go back to like a nine to five for most places. I do feel like some companies like uh, Google or an Apple, they are trying to get their, their employees back uh, because they feel like they probably need it for innovation because they're 
they're building stuff that's never been built before. It's, it's cutting edge technology. So for them, they feel like it's probably better to have everyone in the same room. However, for a lot of jobs, like for me, it's like, here, here's a feature, like go build it out. And then I'll just go like do it on my own. But um, it's something that I can do regardless of where I am. And I do feel like there probably will be lower compensation if you are working from somewhere that has a lower cost of living. Otherwise you could just cheat the system and like get a job in San Francisco, but work somewhere a lot cheaper. All right, next question. Had you not been a software engineer, what would have been your favorite work? So before I got into software development, I was actually a DJ and uh, I was doing a lot of events, uh, but just like anything in the entertainment industry, it's so saturated. It's like all about like who you know, and it wasn't really something that was sustainable long-term, but music has, has always been a passion of mine. And who knows, one day maybe I'll be able to incorporate that back into what I'm doing. All right, so next question. And you know what, actually, let's, I feel like let's, let's change the angle here. Let's, how about we go back to the normal spot? All right, there we go. Let me zoom that out a little bit. All right, next question, Ayush Pent. Is there a future for web development, HTML, CSS, JavaScript with the increasing number ease of pre-built stuff like WordPress, Wix, Tailwind? Absolutely. Uh, I think if anything, it's gonna help. Let's let's take Shopify, for example. That's That's been like the hot thing lately. A lot of people that are creating businesses, they don't wanna buy a place, so they just create something on Shopify. The problem is Shopify's standard website it's okay, but it's really not that great. And if you want to customize it, you're actually going to have to go into the code and change things. I know this because I used to have a Shopify store and luckily I have front end knowledge, although it's limited, I was still able to go in and you know edit the code there, but the average person is not going to be able to do that. So what they would have to do is they'd have to go on another site like Upwork or Fiverr and they would have to like pay someone to customize their website. So if anything, I feel like now more people are going to have websites and they're going to there's gonna be a higher demand for developers that can come and customize those. And also like no big companies are gonna be using those third-party websites. They're gonna have everything uh, built in-house. So don't worry, we're safe. All right, let's do a few more here. Uh, how hard is coding? This is a hard question to answer just because it's gonna be different for every person. So I used to play poker a lot and there was a saying where it was a game where it takes a minute to learn, but a lifetime to master. And I feel like coding is, a, is very similar. Now it's not gonna take you a minute, but I feel like learning the basics, like if statements and loops, you can, most people can pick that stuff up pretty quickly, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, you get into a lot more complicated things like architecting software, uh, scalability, uh, making sure your website is secure, um, just all the like changing technologies. So it can get, like you, you never really master. You're kind of always learning. And our field is, is always evolving. It's always changing uh, with new like frameworks coming out or new like software ideologies, which some people think of that as a negative that things are always changing. But I honestly think it's a good thing. It means that we're constantly improving. Like, like could you imagine if we we're all on the same software that we were on like 20, 30 years ago? Like, you know, imagine like writing your entire website in C, that would be awful. So I think the constant evolution of technologies. Overall, it's, it's a good thing. So to answer your question, uh, is coding hard? Yes and no. All right, Awesome Comp asks, does it matter what university you go to for computer science? For the most part, no, unless you're going to like, like a Stanford or a, like a MIT or like an Ivy League school or something that's like known purely for computer science, maybe something like a Carnegie Mellon. But other than that, most universities are gonna have solid computer science program and it's more just about the individuals and how much you know how much work that you want to put in and how much you like how how much better you want to get so I would pick uh, kind of just whatever makes the most sense from like a location point of view and also a, a financial point of view all right let's do one more here um, how do I get a job at fang so so basically how do I get a job at a top top tech company well there are two parts right there's First of all, it's getting the interview. If you don't have a lot of experience, it's gonna be hard. Um, you're probably gonna need a referral. Like when I got my interview at Google, I had applied so many times and hadn't heard anything. And then the one time I was able to get a referral from someone I knew in grad school and like literally the day after a recruiter reached out to me. So you're either gonna need a bunch of experience uh, or you're probably gonna have to get a referral. Um, and then the second part is the interview, which obviously interviews for these companies are 
very difficult and rigorous. That's how it's going to be when these companies are so big and they can pay like, you know, these crazy salaries. They can pretty much ask problems that are like as hard as they want. I would say the one good thing about interviewing at a big tech company is you kind of know what to expect. The interviews are pretty generic. Like I've, I've interviewed at some kind of like smaller, like startup companies and I've gotten some obscure questions or some very like technology specific questions. For a software engineering role, you know it's probably gonna be very data structure and algorithmic heavy um, with probably like a system design question thrown in there. A lot of stuff you could probably just learn online. All right guys, there you have it. Thank you guys so much for the questions. Uh, like I said, 100,000 subscribers, that's a huge milestone, but I, I honestly, I still feel like we're just getting started. You know, obviously I'm, we're gonna be going for that 1 million uh, one day, we'll see. But yeah, really appreciate it from everyone who's been here since the beginning to like, if you're a new subscriber. Thank you guys so much. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. And oh yeah, keep on coding. <laughs>